Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at some common garden bugs. Let's start with the praying mantis. They can be easy to miss sometimes because they blend in so well with their surroundings. Praying mantises are predatory. They eat a variety of bugs. Not only do they eat pests, but they also eat beneficial insects. I don't mind having them around in my garden. This is one that I call eating a fly on a watermelon plant. Everyone knows what they are, but I can't talk about garden insects without mentioning butterflies. Butterflies are pollinators. They flutter around from flower to flower, drinking nectar through their long tongue. They may not be as good at pollinating as bees are, but they are so beautiful and I love to see them in my garden. If you grow dill or parsley, you might see some of these little fellows crawling around on your herbs. These are black swallowtail butterfly caterpillars. I use some of the dill that I grow, but I mostly plant for the butterflies and the little caterpillars. Next is the Colorado potato beetle. This video footage is baby potato beetle larva. The adults will also eat your plants. They will eat potato plants, tomato plants, peppers, and eggplants. Next we have aphids. Aphids are little tiny bugs that suck sap from the plant's leaves. They can be various colors like green, yellow, red, pink, brown, gray. They really aren't a problem unless their population explodes, and that does happen. Sometimes one plant in the garden will be covered in aphids, and a plant of the same species two foot away will hardly have any aphids on it. I don't worry about it too much if there are only a few aphids here and there. If a plant is infested with them, you can easily turn on a garden hose and spray them off the plant with some water. This one is an assassin bug and it is the poster child for creepy crawly. I saw this one crawling around in a pot of peppers in my garden for weeks. They move really slow and this thing was definitely watching me. If I was standing on the left side of the pot, the thing would turn around and face me. If I was standing on the right side of the pot, it would turn around and face me. It was pretty creepy. These insects are predators. They suck all of the fluids from their prey. Although they eat other bugs, they can bite you. And from what I have read, the bite is pretty painful. Next is the tomato hornworm. These guys are big, juicy, green larvae. When they hatch from their eggs, they start off pretty small, but as they are growing and eating your tomato plants, they get really big, up to four inches long. They can really defoliate your tomato plants quickly. I always pick these off my plants when I see them, even if it's just one, because even one can be very destructive. They blend in with their surroundings really well, and they can be a little bit hard to find. I'll put a link to a video down below where I talk about an easier way to find them that works for me. This one is forming into a pupa and will eventually emerge as an adult hawk moth. Next, we have another predator, the ladybug, also known as the lady beetle. Ladybugs eat loads of aphids and mites. They are a good beneficial bug to have in your garden, but you have to be careful because there are a lot of ladybug lookalikes that will eat your plants, so just be aware of that. This one is a squash beetle. It resembles the ladybug just a little bit, it looks a lot like the Mexican bean beetle. You will find this bug munching on your squash and melon leaves. Next up, we have the spotted and the striped cucumber beetles. These are a common sight in my garden every year. They feed on cucumber leaves, plants, and cucumber pollen. They'll also feed on melon plants. They easily spread cucumber bacterial wilt between plants. If you have this problem as well, look for some cucumber varieties that have resistance to the cucumber wilt disease. This is a dragonfly and it's one of my favorite little garden helpers. They are adorable, googly-eyed little predators. They are so cute. I once saw a documentary that said dragonflies have been here for 300 million years. Apart from being smaller than they used to be, they haven't changed much in all of that time. They're sort of like mother nature's little perfect design. Dragonflies typically live near water. I do have a creek that runs right through my backyard. I see dragonflies all day long cruising around my garden looking for insects to eat. The squash bug can be a big nuisance. These usually become very problematic in my garden. They feed on the foliage of squash, melons, and pumpkins. They look very similar to stink bugs. Stink bugs tend to be as wide as they are long. While squash bugs have a little bit of a slimmer look, I actually have a hard time telling them apart. If I see bugs crawling all over my tomatoes, I assume that they're stink bugs. If I see them on squash, 
they're generally squash bugs and when you lift up the leaves there'll be all kinds of little baby squash nymphs down there crawling around with the adults. I spray them with soapy water. I have a video showing how I do that and I will post a link down in the description. It kills them very quickly. Here are some Japanese beetles. They are an invasive species here in the U.S. These things feed on hundreds of plant species, including some ga common garden plants. This is an army worm. Some years I do have these in my garden, other years I don't see any. A couple of years ago, they were on my tomato plants pretty bad. I do pick them off when I see them. Not only will they eat your tomato leaves, they'll also bore holes into your tomatoes and eat those. The last one we're gonna talk about today is bees. When bees are mentioned, I think that most people think of the European honeybee. But if you really look, you will see that there are so, so many different kinds of bees. There are 20,000 known bee species in the world and 4,000 of those are native to the United States. Besides planting vegetables, if you wanna attract pollinators like bees to your garden, then plant a lot of flowering herbs, and also plant some flowers. Some easy to grow flowers that attract bees that I like are sunflowers, zinnias, cosmos, chamomile, cone flowers are a good one, and there are plenty of others. And that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.